Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. It's been a while since I've done my last movie review, which... <laughs> yeah, the movie that I really hated so much. But you know what? What can you do? However, I'm going to review a movie that I really love. And it's a movie, surprisingly enough, it's already passed 10 years ago. Um, since it came out, and quite honestly, it's nothing but fun. And that is the movie Shoot 'em Up. Yeah. And what can I say about this film? It's non stop, but walls to the walls action with bullets flying everywhere. It really sums it up. Personally, and this movie was not a big hit at the box office when it first came out on September 7, 2007. Its budget was only $39 million and it only made $26.8 million. So it was a bomb, and that's sad because this was an inspiration to. The, all the John Woo films, including Hard Boiled, as well as uh, Tarantino and and many others, even Robert Rodriguez for that matter. And plus, you got um, Clive Owen in the film because he's been known for doing some action films. I mean, granted, he was he just did films like Sin City, Children of Men. He even had another film um, after this called The International and maybe many others that follow. And he's a great action star right there and it shows. And then you got uh, actors like uh, Monica Bellucci, you know, the Italian actress who's been in films like The Matrix Reloaded. I mean, she's very stunningly beautiful, gorgeous, and incredibly sexy. And of course, Paul Giamatti, who's been known for playing different roles uh, in his entire career, but he also has been known for playing over-the-top roles, like Private Parts and with uh, Howard Stern, and of course, Big Fat Liar, where he plays uh, an over-the-top uh, studio executive that's basically taking over um, a boy's script that he actually wrote on his own. So, you know, we know how that turned out. <laughs> now, back to the film. It has everything that you expect from an action movie. That just goes really fast, no doubt about it. it just lots of bullets flying around. I mean, a lot of bad guys. It has incredible stunts. No doubt about it. I mean, a lot of gunplay everywhere. And of course, some classy dialogue that they throw in. In fact, this plays out like a Looney Tunes cartoon. And I know people actually have mentioned it already, but hey, you know, I'll do the honors because I love Looney Tunes. I always have. So, because what's interesting though is that Clive Owen plays a gunman who loves to eat carrots. And you know why he eats carrots? Because it's good for his eyesight. That's right. So he's like the Bugs Bunny with guns. And Paul Giamatti is just Elmer Fudd, or has a mix of Yosemite Sam right there. And in fact, there's even a reference to that too, where he actually did say, what's up, Doc? And, and he even says, Ooh, you're a rascally rabbit. <sighs> that sort of thing. And of course, we already know the, the studio that released this movie, which happens to be owned by Warner Brothers, New Line Cinema. But of course, this was released before Warner Brothers took over it, you know, after being owned by Time Warner for like ten and a half years. 
at the time, you know, since they merged with Turner. Because for a while, though, yes, New Line Cinema was owned by Turner, along with Castle Rock Entertainment. <laughs> and sad to say, this is the last film, well, other than the other film that followed, which was just a short film called Riding Shotgun. I haven't seen it. This was the last film that writer-director Michael Davis had ever done. And it's a shame. Because he would have continued to do some more action films like this. I mean, in the days of John Wick and Deadpool, in fact, he, he probably would have had directed those films anyway if he had a chance. He would have done another film like this. I mean, of course, we have films like Crank and all those other ones that follow. But nothing like this. Nothing at all. I mean, it, it has everything that you expected. So. And it does have all the features right here on the back. Great features. Right here. And yes, this is on Blu-ray as well. In fact, it came out the same way that the DVD release did. So that's a good thing. Um, I don't... I haven't picked up the Blu-ray, but you know what? I think it's good to have the DVD for now. Since I just picked this up recently at Goodwill. For part of the, um, the green and blue tax sale. Just uh, a week ago. As you can tell, <laughs> there's that tag. <laughs> anyway. So let's get to the review. It stars Clive Woolman, Monica Bellucci, Paul Giamatti, with Stephen McCaddy, Great Book, Danielle Payan, Ramona Prinko, Julianne Richings, and Stephen R. Hart. And it's written and directed by Michael Davis. The movie begins when we meet a man named Smith, who's played by Clive Owen, who's just minding his own business at a bus stop, eating a carrot while drinking a cup of coffee, when all of a sudden he spotted a pregnant woman that's being chased down by a local hitman. And he thinks to himself, should I save the woman or not? But he did it anyway. Because <laughs> he just can't stand having to have this happen to her. So he went to the hitman. He grabs a carrot. Shoves it right into his mouth. And slams it by punching it right straight into the back of the head. And that's when he says, eat your vegetables. And that was very brutal right there. I mean, yes, it even happened again when he has to grab a carrot and, and shove it right into the guy's eye. So, yeah, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of great action going around here. But anyway, and as the film begins right there, that's when we get a violent shootout inside the warehouse while he was about to save the pregnant woman who was just ready to give birth to a newborn child. And got out of there, thank goodness. And actually shot the your vertical cord. It turns out that yes, the, the newborn child is a, a boy. So that's when we meet a professional assassin named Hertz, who's played by Paul Giamatti, who's just ready to to shoot Smith along with the pregnant woman. So he, Smith begins to escape all his way out um, from a violent shootout, but, um, but that is until he found out that the pregnant woman had gotten shot in the head, so she's now dead. So Smith actually left her inside a stairwell with the child, you know, while the child was crying. But then he almost felt a little bad because apparently they're going to go after him anyway. He took the child and escape shooting his way out and tries to find someone else to actually adopt them and he did when he went to a local park you know he left the baby inside uh, 
inside one of those swings. But a, a young woman just came by, you know, trying to get the child because he says, who leaves this child behind? And then suddenly she got shot in the stomach you know, by Hertz by using an assault sniper rifle. He was actually ready to not only shoot the baby, but also was going to shoot Smith. So Smith just came and decided to shoot that part to, to actually let, uh, just to let it swing around and around and around so that way you know, he'll be able to s distract them by not hitting the baby. And, which apparently it's almost going to hit him too, so, so he does his ways to save him. And, and then, of course, we even heard the line from Hurt saying, I should have shoot him sideways. <laughs> yeah. Which is interesting because it's almost like a reference to that movie that he did called Sideways. <laughs> so it almost seems like. Let's mention that title. So then he went to a local church, which doesn't seem like a church to me. It just seemed more like just an actual uh, church for, for prostitutes. And that's when he met DQ, which stands for Donna Quintano, who's played by Monica Bellucci. Yeah, she's a hooker. But... Uh, Smith thought maybe this would be the best way for her to take care of the child. So he actually paid her for that. Because <laughs> apparently, you know, inside her room, yeah, there's even <laughs> a crib right there. And there's like several bottles because, yes, uh, you saw a guy actually dressed up like a baby, you know, about to have sex with her. So that was pretty interesting. So he figured, you know, this would be, he figured this would be safe for the newborn child from being attacked by, by Hertz and the rest of his uh, crew. But he tries so hard for that, but she actually refuses not to do it because she doesn't want to get involved in this. But apparently she wants up getting involved anyway. So when Hertz suddenly arrives, um, he was torturing Donna. Um, let's just say DQ instead. <laughs> okay. Yeah, not Dairy Queen, in a way. Well, anyway, the Hertz was about to torture DQ, trying to tell him where he is and where's the baby. And he's about to shoot all these bottles, you know, milk bottles. And then that's when Smith arrived, a little late, but there you go. And that's where he says the line, What's up, Doc? And then <laughs> Hertz actually says, Ooh, you're a rascally rabbit. He also shot him. Um, shot him near the chest. Only to find out that, yes, Hertz actually did have a bulletproof breast. He already just shot down all the other guys around. So <laughs> there you go. Just when uh, he was about to grab the knife and just ready to stab Smith. <laughs> In a very crazy way. So then, uh, Smith and DQ had escape. Um, they were about to go to a, a local pawn shop just to buy some guns. But he did assume that he didn't have enough money. I mean, he only had $20 in food stamps. <laughs> and yeah, there was that joke where he says, You're going to pay all that with uh, food stamps? And he just says, it's just good as cash <laughs> to the, the counter. Well, well, then he, he got out and, and then he found out that uh, DQ was about to have uh, sex with, with a guy because he was trying to get money to pay. But instead, uh, yeah, that didn't work out. So then <laughs> they decided to buy a bulletproof breast um, for the baby. So there you go. So after that, uh, they went inside uh, Smith's hideout. Yeah, he has his own hideout where he has everything. I mean, he basically takes out a rat and just puts it inside the, the basket so that way he'll be able to open the door. Perfect. And then inside, he basically 
plants a lot of carrots inside all these uh, these tires and he had tons of uh, weaponries and everything that he got. He even got an old TV as well, which only has free channels, by the way. So they figured they'd be safe in there and for a while until they figure out a plan, until these guys show up. He began to notice that when he turned into all free channels, I mean, one was the news, which shows up, shows a senator, and the other one actually shows. Um, heavy metal music that's being played on on a music video channel and then and then there's just some other random stuff here so it's only free channels but then he begin to realize that whenever he hears uh, the senator on the news he actually cries the baby but then when he turns into heavy metal rock music he stops crying so it just proves that Heavy metal music can really help him out. <laughs> That's really something. Like, I never thought a child can actually stop crying by listening to heavy metal music. Very clever right there, coming from Michael Davis. So, I guess it, it probably shows right there that, yes, it can really help here. <laughs> Which also led to political issues in the film where Senator Rutledge had a plan that even though he's dealing with uh, strict gun control laws and that's what's going on I mean this is where we get to this particular topic here was that um, he actually has cancer and he's actually planning on having a bone marrow treatment that will save his life so that way he'll become president someday yeah he's being ready to be since he's a candidate he wanted to hire Hertz and Hamerson, who actually owns um, a corporation for weapons, which is owned in in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I mean, that's where they had all these guns. That actually has um, the word Hamerson plastered onto it, so it's advertised here. Anyway. <laughs> Their plan was they wanted to grab the child and kill him in order for him to save the life of a senator. So that way he'll be able to be he'll be able to win presidency. So I know that's going to be a problem. So then the Smith and DQ had continued trying to find their way out, trying to find themselves safe everywhere they go. Um, but they went inside a local uh, heavy metal club. They met one guy who, who found out what was going on and why they're doing this. And that's where we see um, one of the pregnant women out there. So it's not the only one. I mean, there's actually two more. But they were all killed completely by the rest of the crew, including the all these uh, FBI agents around, uh, or CIA, so they're actually about to go, they're just actually killing them all just so they can grab the babies so they can use them to, to save the life of the senator. And that's where we have all these sperms uh, um, that's being held inside, uh, inside a frozen room, and they're just continuing to go shooting all the guys out everywhere. I guess that then later they went to a hotel room they they put the baby inside the bathroom to into the tub just to keep them safe and you know they, they were ready to have sex and then suddenly the guys with with masks on them those black masks that they were wearing were shooting them I mean this had that incredible scene where <laughs> you know while they were having sex I mean they started shooting all these guys one by one all of that. So they escape um, and they continue to go on and, and on and then Smith just uh, decided to go uh, on a trip to find the senator so they'll be able to stop him and then stop the rest of the guys and and then there you go. <laughs> so they figured uh, the best way to actually um, 
try to keep uh, DQ and, and the baby safe was actually to go far away on a trip so that way when Smith comes back to take care of all the guys out there they are going after him he'll soon be able to come back with them so they'll be safe and we also learned that yes he went inside a local um, ice cream parlor so it looks to me like yes the DQ actually works over there and she's taking care of the baby so things were, are going to be okay and that's what we led to another shootout that went into it like there was a robbery going around and all that <laughs> yeah I know um but it's just fun it's it's non-stop action right there. I mean, I love the incredible stunts they went into the film. Like, there's a scene where where Smith actually rolls all the way down into the, the stairwells. And he actually takes down all the guys that are about to go upstairs going after you know, Smith, DQ, and, and the child. It was just, it was amazing. I mean, there's a lot of that in the movie. There's even a scene where... Uh, he actually went down into the the red B BMW and and he just uh, drive all the way. He even <laughs> you know he was taking out all the guys out there. But there's even a scene and yes, I'm gonna mention it right away. Was that there was a scene where he actually planted something that he didn't expect to have because he was afraid that um, that when he was uh, Trying to escape all these guys, just shooting them down, using all of his guns and reparies, taking them down. He got crashed by the guys that that going after him, and the car flips. Then he began to find out that the child was missing from the car, and then he just went back. He found out that the, that the baby was was on the road. So then Hertz was about to go after the baby. Um, so then Smith just came driving all the way straight and and trying to shoot trying to shoot down all the guys out there that are ready to shoot him into that truck that they that they're driving on and, and then he was trying to grab the baby but he missed and then <laughs> he actually uh he just uh, stopped the brakes, then he drive, then he went all the way straight into the truck, and just <laughs> took down all the guys uh, with his gun, completely. But then he was ready to go after the baby, you know, before Hertz was about to go, and then apparently Hertz actually ran over the baby, and yeah, he was afraid because that was going to happen. I know that was going to suck until he realized that the baby was just <laughs> an animatronic uh, decoy right there. <laughs> so, because now we know that DQ actually had the baby the whole time just to keep them safe. So that, that was really interesting because, I, I know, I didn't explain how that they got the animatronic baby in there, but you know what, I think that really worked. Um, anyway. But yes, uh, there, there's other scenes too where they actually skydive too. I'm uh, trying to shoot down all these agents around. I mean, that was really something. And then uh, there's there's even more. I mean, there's like tons of f fucking scenes there that just it, it just grabs your adrenaline pumping right there. It's it's amazing. I, I just love it. Um, the cast was great, no doubt about it. Clive Owen was definitely the right choice to play. It's hard to believe, though, because originally he was going to be chosen to play uh, James Bond, which definitely has a James Bond feel right there, in a way. But it's different. Um, but then they gave it to Daniel Craig, so he, he wants up doing this movie instead. I mean, yeah, like I would imagine Daniel Craig actually playing that role, and that would have been interesting, but... But he did the best he could. Um, and I love all the dialogue that was going for too. I mean, especially from Paul Giamatti. I mean, he, he basically loves to tell stories um, in front of uh, <laughs> uh, Smith. So it was just, 
it's just amazing what he was going to go for. I mean, there's even a scene where he actually torches him by breaking all of his uh, fingers. He was really messed up. And it was very brutal. Smith also had his own pet peeves, too. Like, he always starts with a sentence, you know what I hate. And what he says what he hates. Um, in fact, here's one memorable line I'm going to say it anyway, which is actually towards the end of the film. He says, a pussy with a gun on his hand. That's what he hates. In, in the battle between him and, and Hertz. Really something. I even love the line that Hertz says when, <laughs> when Smith was going all the way down to the stairwell and he actually <laughs> landed onto the guy that he just shot and <laughs> and yes, even the guy actually vomited too. <laughs> and he says, Boy, do we suck? Or this guy is really good! <laughs> no, he's just uh, fucking awesome. That's... That's all he is. Monica Bellucci, without a doubt, was very gorgeous, very sexy um, in this movie. And she did a great job playing the role of a hooker named DQ. I mean, she does her best. I mean, she even speaks Italian at times. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, they, they were great. I mean... Clive Owen, Paul Giamatti, I mean, with all this funny dialogue, he was he was perfect. I mean, this was the right choice for him to actually play a professional assassin and hitman to, to go after. I mean, he has his own sense of humor, so it really works. I mean, while he wears his glasses, so it makes him this interesting. I mean, there's even times where he basically just calls his wife. I mean, I know we don't see his wife. We, we just have him see him just calls him. Telling him that <laughs> that I'm very busy and and I'll see you soon, honey, and all that. But of course, <laughs> and it even has a kick-ass soundtrack. I mean, there's no doubt about it. It's mostly filled with heavy metal music, such as Molly Crew, Motorhead, and all the rest. I mean, yeah, I actually get to hear the song Ace of Spades, which I know I heard this song from a video game. It was a racing car game that I played. So I, I never thought I would hear that song in this movie. And, um... <laughs> it, it just works so well while they had a violent shootout. I mean, there's like so many pistols flying around, you know, and Smith is like shooting them one by one all the way while all the guys are taking them down and oh my god I mean this is definitely a wet dream for for action fans out there I mean no doubt about it I mean yes it does make uh, John Woo completely jealous as one critic actually explained on the back of the DVD this is one live action cartoon that you'll never forget um, but yeah, check out this movie, you know, you'll have a fun time. Just buy the DVD or Blu-ray, or maybe both if, if you feel like it, and you'll have fun with it. It's cool. So anyway, I give Shoot 'em Up an awesome, adrenaline-pumping fun, five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.